Hey folks, I'm back in coding rooms for this case. What we want to do is provide some code to our students that they cannot see. So for example, in the uh, AP CSA exam, in part B and part C, uh, you have to rely upon part A being correct. If the student can't figure out part A, you still want them to be able to do part B and so on. And you know, you can think of other examples where you might want to give them some methods that they can use, but you don't necessarily want them to be able to see the code because maybe it gives away too much or uh, whatever reason. So let's go ahead and create a new assignment. Uh, we're going to call it hidden code. And there are actually two ways that you can do this. So uh, I'm going to call the, uh, I'm going to give the prompt here. So I created a bit of a contrived example here. Um, I'm going to give the students a class, my math, to fill in. Uh, it's going to have a method called expo, which basically raises the number a to the power b. But they're supposed to use this secret method called mult in the class hidden math to do so. So I don't want to show them how my secret multiplication method works because it's far too advanced. Um, but I want them to be able to access it. So I am going to put it in my own hidden math class. I'm going to compile that to a jar file and then I'm going to delete the original code. So they can still use the class because it's in the jar file in the same folder, uh, but they won't be able to see the Java file that I used to create it. Um, so let's do that. So the template by default just has the main. So I need to create my math.java and remember that it is going to um, it's going to have this stub for an exponent method that the student's supposed to fill in. Um, I'm also going to say make sure to use the mult method from the hidden math class. So again, it's, it's a little bit contrived, but the point is uh, to show you how to use the, um, the jar file to keep it secret. So the first thing I need to do is create the hidden math class. And I don't really need a constructor. I don't really want a constructor. I want them to actually use mult as a static method. So I'm just going to say static int mult. So this is my entire, you know, super secret multiplication method uh, that I don't want students to be able to see. So how can I use this? Well, let's test it out here in main. So I just print out the mult function three, four, and instead of importing it, I just call it directly. But anyway, the point being I can use my hidden math it's in the same folder. I call the mult function. It's static, so I don't have to instantiate a hidden math object. I can just call it. So if I run it, it's going to return 12, which is exactly what I want. But right now, the student can still see hidden math, and I don't want them to be able to. So I go and I click on shell here. And I compile the hidden math into a class file. So now you can see I have hidden math.class. And then I'm going to put that in a jar file. So I'm going to package it up using um, jar create verbose into a file. And I'm going to call it hidden math.jar. And the only file I need to add is hiddenmath.class. So again, you run the jar command, cvf, into the jar file. 
that you want with the class file that you are putting in it and it's going to add that to the jar file so now I can actually go ahead and um, delete this entire hidden math dot Java file I don't need it anymore if I run my program it'll still work so um, the student can no longer see what's in hidden math that file is completely gone it's hidden but I can still use it in my main file if I want to and same as in my math right so um, if I wanted to fill in the exponent method um, well I wouldn't do it in the template I would do it in the model solution so let's save the changes go over to the model solution here I'm going to create a model solution based on that template and you'll see the jar file still there I can still run um, my program and it'll work just as well and now I want to create the model solution for the exponent so here's my solution I create the total as a local variable and then I go as many times as the exponent the value of the exponent I loop and I multiply the total by the base so if it's 2 to the power 3 it's gonna be 1 times 2 times 2 times 2 which is 8 and it'll return 8 so let's see if this works let's go back into the Java file and try it out so in this case I didn't make expo a static method so I have to actually instantiate a my math object for fun but it's gonna work the same way I'm gonna call uh, exponent base 2 to the exponent 3 and it should print out 8 and it does so again in my math uh, we have this hidden math call to multiply hidden math student has no idea what it does uh, it's in the jar file yes technically they could uh, extract the class file from the jar file and decompile it but if they're doing that then they can probably figure out how to do multiplication on their own so that is one way to use uh, a jar file to hide code from students but let's say, for example, you wanted to have a method in the same class. So, for example, on the AP CSA exam, often the method in part B or part C relies upon the method in part A, a and they're all in the same class. This isn't going to work the, the way we've done it because obviously I can't compile my math uh, into a jar file then have something add to it it's it, it's not gonna work so luckily we can get around this with inheritance so let's pretend that the question in part a was to create a remainder method and in part B we need to use the remainder method to figure out whether an integer is even so again slightly contrived example but here's the problem if I put my solution for the remainder method into the uh, Java file here in my math they'll see the solution to part a and just be able to go back and fix it so let's go back to the template and uh, figure out how we can add a method using inheritance that they can use for part B but they can't see right so we're gonna add the remainder method to a super class so that we can call it in my math without knowing what it what its implementation is so let's go ahead and do that so in the template right the first thing that I'm gonna to need to do 
is create my uh, super class. So I'm just going to call it supermath.java. And I'm going to put my implementation for remainder in the supermath class. So here's my supermath class. I created a remainder method and it returns the remainder. And now if I go back into my math, right, I can extend super math. And down at the bottom, I create this remainder method. And all it does is call the supers remainder method. I could put the class name super math here or just super either way works. But now I have a remainder method in my math class with a hidden implementation because it calls my super classes remainder method. So now I can go ahead and uh, compile the super class into a jar file and delete the Java file so that they can't see it. So I just go into the shell. I say compile my super math file and there it is. So I jar create both into a file called supermath.jar supermath and I add the supermath class file. It adds it and now I can go ahead and delete supermath.java and it'll still work. So let's go ahead and test this out in the main program. Uh, oh, we don't want to test it out yet because we're still in the template. Um, so let's save our changes, go over to the model solution. We'll have to delete the one we have and create a new model solution. And instead of malt this time, we want to uh, figure out the is even method. So we know that if uh, we don't even an if statement, we can just say return um, remainder of a and two equals zero. All right? If the remainder of a and two is zero, uh, then it's even, so we return true. And if it's not, it automatically returns false. So let's see if this works. All right, this remainder is calling this remainder, is calling my super remainder, but super is hidden so that students can't see it. So let's make sure it works. So again, I have to create a my math object, and then I'm gonna print out is even 40, and I'm just gonna call is even with the argument 40, and I'll run it, and it comes back true. And let's make sure it works with 41. And again, comes back false. So that's pretty much it. Uh, you could do this with a separate class, for example, and, and call that, but I like this way because uh, it keeps everything sort of straightforward and um, uses inheritance. Uh, and yeah, so that's two different ways to use a jar file to keep code hidden from your students, uh, but provide them methods that they can use in their solutions. If you have any questions, please hit me up on Discord or email, and I'll be happy to help any way I can. Thanks.